Hey guys, John from FlyMikeAlpha.com, and today we're going to be going over how to brief up an FAA localizer plate. So we're doing the localizer, we're on a 1-8 right into Charlotte, and just how do we want to brief this plate to get ourselves familiar before we enter into the terminal environment, and what do we want to discuss with a safety pilot if we happen to have one on board with us. So, for starters, let's just go over what we're going to brief and why. We're going to start in the top right, localizer runway 18 right, Charlotte Douglas International into CLT. Then we want to confirm that the plate is valid. So we're going to say, all right, plate's valid, 2nd of February 2017 to 2nd of March 2017. It works. We'll make sure that it checks with our safety pilot if he's got the same valid plate as well. Or if you're flying by yourself, just verify it to yourself that that plate is valid. Next, you'll come over to the top left, you'll brief the frequency. This should already be dialed in to your nav radio. So either in the standby or active frequency, localizer 110.15, we'll point at it and verify it. It's got a channel number and DME. So the DME is uh, off the loc here. That channel number, as well as the DME being listed there, lets us know that it has DME on the loc. The final approach course inbound, 183. We'll confirm that in our G1000, G530, 430, 650, whatever the heck we happen to be using, FMS, whatever it might be that day, we'll make sure that's actually in our uh, management system. Then with the FA plates, next thing that comes is our touchdown zone elevation, airport elevation, and runway landing distance available. Landing distance available, 9,000 feet, touchdown zone elevation, 744, airport elevation, 748. Circling is not allowed at night, and some taste approaches authorized with runway 18 center and left, DME or radar is required for the approach. We have ALSIF 2 approach lighting, Missed approach instructions, climb to 1,200 feet, then climbing right turn to 4,000 feet on the Charlotte VOR DME radial 250 to Stella intersection 13 DME from Charlotte and hold. Continue the climb and the hold to 4,000 feet. Our MSA based off the Charlotte VOR is 3,800 feet, all quadrants. Coming down to our plan view, we're going to verify localizer. Yep, the DME is coming off the loc. That's good. And we'll verify these fixes. We don't have to actually say them all, but it would be good for pilot monitoring, your safety pilot, or for you just to glance, make sure all these fixes and all the altitudes are correct in your management system. So in your FMS or G1000 or whatever it is you're using, if these altitudes are wrong on those fixes, it's doing you no good. It's probably just going to get you a deviation of some sort or put you in an unsafe scenario. So if you have all these fixes in there like you should, Make sure all the altitudes associated with them are correct as well. And remember, you're going to be identifying these fixes off DME, not just by staring at your screen. This is a localizer approach. Even though you have a uh, WAS-equipped aircraft, possibly you know flying G1000, you would prefer to use DME. That's what is really going to be confirming where these fixes are in relation to you. Down here in our profile view, we do have a note that the visual glide slope indicator and ILS glide path are not coincident. So if you are doing an ILS approach, it's not going to be lining up necessarily perfectly. We have a 2.8 degree uh, visual glide slope angle compared to our uh, ILS of 3.0. Next thing we're going to talk about is our minimum at J Hunt, 3,000 feet. Then it's not down to MDA after that. It's going to be down to our step down fix of Silov because we are using DME and we're going to identify Silov off of 2.8 DME. We'll go down to 1280. Then after Silov, we'll go down to 1040, 2400 RVR is what we're looking for. VDP is 2.1 miles uh, DME off the loc. And we're going to start our clocks at J Hunt, figure 90 knots. We'll use 4 minutes 36 seconds for our timing. In our plan view here, we're looking at runway 18 right, Pappy's on the right, center line lighting, that's those white dots there. 9,000 feet available. We'll expect to exit off the left at Whiskey 4. Take Sierra to cross runway 18 center, cross hotspot 2, we'll watch out for that, and echo into the ramp. Then we'll ask our safety pilot if he's got any questions. So that covers pretty much all we want to cover here. We'd probably want to go over to a taxiway diagram to actually know what these taxiways are unless you're super familiar with them. Remember your briefing runway crossings, hotspots, and any construction that you know about from the NOTAMs. These frequencies, I might glance over, especially if I'm pilot monitoring, I'll make sure that the right frequencies are dialed in. But these, I'm not quite nearly as concerned about as just the proper loc frequency already being pre-dialed in. And if we're going to back up, um, I'm sorry, if we're going to be using DME uh, and, uh, not off the loc, off of the VOR, then we'll be making sure that we have the VOR frequency dialed in in addition 
to the low frequency if we did not have DME, but we do. So we're just gonna be using just this one frequency uh, for ourselves and maybe put Charlotte in nav two um, in case we have to go mist and use the radials, God forbid the GPS breaks and we actually have to fly mist approach using the VOR, ugh. So let's go ahead and run through that one more time at normal speed, how it would sound if we're gonna go ahead and brief a localizer runway 18 right approach. So. Loke, runway 18 right approach into Charlotte Douglas International, CLT, valid, 2nd of February 2017 to 2nd of March 2017. Does that check with you? Yep, cool. Loke, DME, 110.15. Final approach course, 183. Runway landing distance available, 9,000 feet. Touchdown zone elevation, 744. Airport elevation, 748. Circling not authorized tonight. Simultaneous approaches are authorized with runway 18 center and left. DME or radar is required. The VGSI and ILS glide path are not coincident. LSF2 approach lights, missed approach, climb to 1200 feet, then climbing right turn to 4000 on the Charlotte VOR, radial 250 to still intersection, 13 DME from Charlotte and hold, continue the climb in the hold to 4000 feet. The MSA based off the Charlotte VOR is 3800 feet all quadrants. Fixes are all in the database, altitudes check. We are going to be a minimum of 3,000 feet at J Hunt, stepping down to 1280 after J Hunt at Silov, after Silov, down to our minima of 1040, looking for 2400 RVR to land. VDP is 2.1 off the loc, and our timing is going to be at 90 knots, 4 minutes, 36 seconds from J Hunt to our missed approach point, should we have to go missed. Landing runway run 8 right. Happy's on the right, else of two lights, center line lights on the runway, 9,000 feet long, we'll expect to exit off the left, Whiskey 4, Sierra cross runway 18 center, hotspot 2, we'll watch out for there, and take echo into the ramp. Any questions? Then you'll talk about it, answer any questions you might have, get on the same page, and that's pretty much it. So not as smooth of a flow with the FA plates as the JEPs, but it can still be done. Just develop a normal flow for yourself, which you feel comfortable with. Um, try to cover all that information. And if you think I missed anything, leave in the comments below if there's any other specific things you like to brief on your approach briefings. Remember, even when you're single pilot, it's a good idea to do these things. Get yourself in the mindset of what you're gonna be doing on this approach and more importantly, what you're gonna be doing after the approach, either taxing in or going missed. It's gonna end one of those two ways. If it ends any other way, ooh, that's a really bad day, so sorry. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments below. Let me know what you think about other ways that you like to brief the approach. We'll go ahead and talk about it there. Make sure you give us a thumbs up, like the video, subscribe to the channel, keep up with all our latest videos. Check out our Patreon page, support us if you would. We really appreciate it. Keeps all these videos coming out, keeps our costs down low. And most importantly, if you can't fly every day, then fly at MikeAlpha.com. We'll see y'all next time.